Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Hello, Germany. Hello. Welcome to my living room. Good, uh, to say, uh, guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Abend, I think, at this hour, no? It's getting late. Good evening. Guten Abend. Good, guten Abend. Exactly. Well done. Well, it's not your first rodeo in Germany, isn't it? No, I, I was here in 2017. In 2017? That was the last time? Yeah. Okay, the time flies. That was the years before the COVID. Yes. Different times? We lost a couple of years there. Yeah. We lost a couple of years, different times. Well, welcome back. It's always lovely to have you. Thank you. And always lovely to meet with the fans, I presume. Yeah, the, thank you guys for coming. So, this was a wonderful day. Uh, we had a few guests uh, before you. We had the Shadow Hunters team, we had the Supernatural, and we all kind of came into the conclusion that coming to the conventions for you guys, it's not only to meet the fans, but also to meet yourself in a way, because you get the love that you give on screen reflected by the fans' love. And I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I, I really love that. And yeah. uh, can I segue from that to a question? What is your most memorable fan um, memory that you have, or a moment when you met a fan, or anything that comes to your mind? Maybe the first convention. Wow, I've been to so many. I, I mean, today I, I met a lovely uh, fan. I don't know if they're here. Uh, who went through cancer? Are you are, are you here? To, she was in uh, my meet and greet today. Is it? Oh, hi! Right there, right there. And it was so wonderful to meet her and, and her family and um, and her best friend and and uh, you know she said that Twilight. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but she said that Twilight helped her through her her cancer treatment, and it really touched me and made me feel really happy that we were able to, you know have a movie that moved you in that way and, was, and give you strength. So I told her, I hope that uh, there's no more doctors for her to see except for Dr. Carlisle. So. <laughs> Bravo, that's really sweet. It is an amazing superpower that you guys have as actors and, and artists to just convey that, um, you know, first of all, love, but also to give people a, a break from their own, all, real life and from the reality. It is pretty yeah. cool, no? I mean, I'm a fan too, so I understand, you know. Um, I, I grew up watching movies, and, uh, and so sometimes I see actors from things that I've watched, and I still turn into a 12-year-old boy. I, I, I got to meet uh, Richard Dean uh, Anderson, yeah. and, and uh, we drove from the airport together, and he's the nicest man. And I had never met him before. Uh, we drove from the airport from, from, we both were on the same flight. We drove for like 30 minutes. And I thought to myself, wow, if I, if I could imagine when I was 12 or 13 that I'd get to meet MacGyver and, uh, you know, um, Atlantis, the guy in Atlantis, who I, who I loved, I would play MacGyver when I was a kid, you know. I mean, so for me, it was just a special treat to, to be in his presence. You know? So I, I, I love actors, and I feel the same way. You watch movies, you watch TV, there's an escape there that you can, um, and they take you on an emotional journey. And when you get to see them in multiple movies, and you get to see them in multiple shows, they become a part of you, part of your family. So I feel the same way. And then on the other side, like now being an actor, and experiencing what it's like to be a fan, I'm, I'm always so moved when fans come to see me that, that I always try to give them as much as I can because I know that they're, the experience is what they leave with, not, not just the picture, you know? That's true. So I want to thank each and every one of you for coming today uh, to see me, to also to sit in the audience today. That means a lot to me. Well, thank you so much, guys. I can already see that we have some questions from the audience, so let's just jump straight in. Sure. Go ahead. Hello, my question is, what's your favorite song? F favorite song? Yes. Um, wow, that's a good question. That's a tough one. I mean, look, that's a really hard question, because it's like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite book? Like, 
Uh, um, songs for me, it depends on what, what mood you're in, right? So sometimes uh, you might be in a joyful mood and you want to hear something really joyful in the morning. I like to hear something like that wakes you up in the morning. Um, and then sometimes you're feeling melancholy and you just want to have something that kind of you hear that's kind of makes you feel to get that emotion out, you know? Uh, so I don't know if I have a favorite song, but what happens is I'll hear something and then I end up liking that song, so I end up playing it over and over and over. Do you, does anybody else do this until you're so sick of it that you don't want to hear it anymore? And I do, you, that, I do that often. But then you hear it like a year later. Yeah, then a year later you're like, oh, That's a bad That's such a good song. What was the last song that you listened to uh, intentionally, like that yeah. you put on like recently? Uh, I have a record player at home, so like I put on, uh, and my son's one and a half, so. You know, he'll come over and say, Lena Horn or like, The Beatles. <laughs> and he's one and a half, and I love that he knows, you know, understands music. Yeah, uh, Bob Dylan, he'll pick up an album and say, Bob Dylan, and he'll hand it to me. So it's kind of fun to see uh, through his eyes, you know. Um, so the last record I put on probably was, was The Beatles. But, yeah. That's gonna be well in a musically educated kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, he, he scratches all my records up. <laughs> he's always trying to mess with the needle, but. You know, when you're, when, when you're a dad, you don't care because you just want them to, you know, experience everything. So the records are less important than, than him watching him soak up the music. You know? The spark in the eyes yeah, when they yeah. try to do it as well. Yeah. And what is your favorite song? Oh, I have many songs. I hear... <laughs> Tell us one. Thank you. Oh, oh wait, wait. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, bye. I... By the Beatles. Oh, you know what I also love? Uh, and it's a little embarrassing. The Twilight soundtrack is so good. And I often put that on, and it's a little embarrassing because I'm in the movies, but uh, I don't care because it's the good music. The songs are so good. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. So, wait, when you said your favorite song was Thank You, is that Danke Shane? Right? Danke Shane. Yeah. This is favorite song. Danke schön, darling, danke schön. I recall Central Park in full. Thank you, thank you. Karaoke tonight. <laughs> My hotel room. Everybody's invited. Watch out. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, hello, nice to see you again. I have two okay. questions. I uh, changed my question right now because uh, you said you like the Twilight soundtrack. I love it too, I always listen to. What is your favorite song from that? Ooh. Uh, um, it goes... Uh, what's the one with Bella with the, when, when the camera's going around? Wait, what's that one called? I'm so bad with the names of the songs. A possibility. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. There's a possibility. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. Uh, and then the, the one f that plays during the baseball. Baseball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're and welcome. my second question is, um, do you like to be associated with Twilight? And uh, do you often get uh, recognized as Carly? Um, I've always loved being a part of Twilight. It's a, it was such a big part of my career. Uh, some actors are like, Oh, I've done other things, and I, I, I've done a lot of things, so if somebody doesn't like Twilight, they might like something else, and if they don't like that, then they'll like something else. I always joke that if I put all of my characters in one room, it would be a really fun party, because they're all so different, right? Uh, so, so for me, I don't mind getting recognized from one or there. Sometimes, like, I, it's hard to tell what a fan likes, because somebody will come up and say, hey, I, I'm a big fan of yours. And I think, oh, they must like this one show just because it's this man or this, this woman. I try to figure it out. But they always surprise me. And sometimes they say something that I didn't even think of. Yeah. So, um, but they're all kind of like my children. You know what I mean? Like if somebody says, who's your favorite child? You know, it depends on the day. But, <laughs> but, uh, but you love them all, right? So I'm never going to not love them because there's a lot of me. I put a lot of myself and a lot of work into those movies. My, my test for if I, if I take a job or not has always been, am I gonna be excited on my way to work? And if, I, if it doesn't excite me, then honestly, like I've turned down paychecks 
then my agents get mad at it, and I say, Rev, I'm not gonna get excited to be, and they go, but it's so much money, can you be excited? <laughs> I say, no, it's just not, it doesn't work that way. Like, it, it, when, the, when it moves you, when you feel excited on your way to work, then it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a massive success, or maybe five people saw it, because you're putting the same amount of passion and love into each one. Um, so they all become my favorite then, so I'm not gonna be mad at anybody who says that they like something that I do. Okay, thank you uh, for being a part of Twilight. Oh, thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi, so first of all, very lovely to have you here in my hometown. And my question would be um, picking up on what you just said uh, about your characters. So my question is, if you could spend one day with one of your characters, what would you like to do and what would you like to ask them? If you can pick one. <laughs> wow, that's a really good question. Um, let me think. If I could spend the day with any of my characters. Uh, huh. There, there's also I, there, like I love all of them, so it's hard. Um, I mean, I, I could say Carlisle because it, I, he, he's such a fascinating character, and there's so much history there that I want to know, like. What was it like living in the 1800s? What was it like living in 1850? What was it like, you know, watching, uh, you know, in the 1920s, uh, coming to America, watching like Babe Ruth play a baseball, and like, like the, these are little things that like, uh, he, he has like 400 years of history that I could pick his brain on. So it'd be really fascinating to sit with him. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> And you guys would like go for dinner or play? I don't know if I go for dinner with Carla. No, no, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe coffee. Yeah, I, just I don't think he would drink it, but I would <laughs> sip it slowly. Mm. Yeah, Thanks. I'll skip dinner with him. Yeah, yeah, but maybe better. <laughs> Next question, please. I'm a huge Twilight fan. My question is, um, what kind of superpower did you have wanted from the movies? Which one I would want? Yes. <laughs> I mean, seeing the future is pretty cool, uh, what Alice has, you know, I mean, I think that would be kind of fun. Um, I always, if I had a superpower at all, it would be flying, because <laughs> I, I always wish we could turn into bats in Twilight so we could just fly places, because, <laughs> like, it's so much easier to fly than, uh, than drive places, but, um, yeah, I, I think, I think reading, reading the future, it would be a fun superpower to have. Uh, Carlisle's superpower is compassion, and uh, I don't know, it's not the best superpower, I guess, it's like, you can't, you know, you're not invisible, you know, like, but compassion is, I, I'm a compassionate person too, so I'm, I'm very empathetic, and I love being able to like be in a room and kind of feel people's energy, which I feel like Carlisle has that ability to do too, you know, so that's not bad. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi. Um, first of all, I wanted to say I love your work and you are like my childhood. And I wanted to ask what was your favorite role in your whole career? My, my favorite? Role. Role. Yes. Um, kind of like I just said, like they're, they're real, when, you, when I go to work and I'm passionate on my way to work, then they become all my favorite roles, you know? So it'd be easy for me to say Twilight because that one is the most well-known out of probably my, my career. There's a show I did called Nurse Jackie. I don't know if did some people see that one. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to pick. That's like saying, who's your favorite kid? You know, I have four kids, so it's, like, it's hard to pick what my favorite one would be. I, I mean, Twilight is very special to me because I did it for so long. It was like seven years of my life. And, uh, and I really feel like I, I, I have a bond with those other actors. Like we, we feel, a, I feel like they're a part of my family, even now, you know? Uh, like I just, I spoke to Ashley Green last night. We were texting and I saw Kellen Lutz a week or two ago. Um, and Jackson Rathbone I saw a couple, a month or so ago at a convention. So it's always nice to run into them, and every time I see them, you know, like when you when you don't see family for a little while, and then you see them, and it's like no time has passed, and that's how it feels like with the cast. You know, it's like it, there's never this weird awkwardness. It's just like 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 I saw them yesterday. Yeah. 
you know. It's very nice. That's yeah. a nice connection to have as well, no? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Do you want to know who my favorite cast member was? Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I love you. No, they're all my favorite. I love them all. Thank you. Do you want to know who my, I hated the most? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't need um, I just have a simple question. Yes. Who is your favorite Cullen? Cullen? Yes. Well, that's, that's putting me on the spot. Uh, I mean, I, I think that, I think that Carlisle, Carlisle always had like a, a real connection with Edward. And, um, and, I, and I felt like he was like his first son, you know what I mean? And so, uh, I also feel like he felt guilty for turning Edward, because even though you know he made a promise to his his mom, and it was one of the, you know it was the, one of the first, and, and I'm not sure he felt he made the right decision because it's kind of like he didn't have permission. You know, you should prob probably get consent from people if you're going to turn them into a vampire. That'd be um, nice. <laughs> that'd be nice. Consent is always a good thing. Um, so I think he always felt a little guilty. Uh, but but there's a certain bond and a love I think he has for Edward. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's the next question. Hello. Um, my next question is: Did you meet your German voice actor? He is here too. Oh yeah, that's true. I haven't met him yet, uh, but I think he's here tomorrow too, right? Yeah. 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 I was busy signing, but uh, I told uh, my handler uh, that I'd like to meet him. I hear he has a very sexy voice. <laughs> Better than mine. <laughs> and he speaks German way better than me. So. Yeah, definitely true. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, that's a mission for tomorrow, yeah. no? to meet that I will, guy. I will definitely seek him out. Fair enough. And I, I have a question, because uh, not only you're um, trying your, your uh, strengths as a, an actor, but also as a producer and director. Mm. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about your upcoming projects, about the Unbreakable Boy, Boy and the On Fire? Sure. Uh, On Fire is a movie that I starred in. I also directed. Uh, the director, I didn't set out to direct it. The director got sick, he got COVID, so I ended up uh, taking over as director and then, uh, you know, cutting the movie. And so I did a lot of work in post production on it. So, uh, so I'm very proud of that movie. It's about a dad who's uh, trapped in a wildfire with his family and then they're trying to get out. So there's a lot of action there, but it's a very poignant movie too. There's so many fires all over the world that people have to go through. And, the experience that they, they go through, the danger, the trauma that causes their families. Uh, so for me, it was a very poignant film. Um, and I was uh, happy to step in and, and, and direct it. And I've directed before, so it was, uh, it felt uh, it, it felt like a comfortable thing. Um, would, you, would you go back to directing? Is it something that you feel comfortable? Yeah, I've directed three movies yeah. now, and, and I, I'd like to do more. I have a couple of mov movies that I'm attached to direct. With those, it becomes like, uh, I actually have a movie I'm trying to do with Ashley that I'd love to direct her in. Okay. And so Ashley has uh, read the script and she likes it, so we're trying to get some financing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I would, I would be so fun to direct her. Yeah. And I wouldn't even, I don't, I don't think I'd act in that. I think I would just direct her in that. Uh, so we're trying to get that off the ground. And then I have a TV series that I wrote that I'm going to star in as well and produce, and that I'll shoot at the end of the year. And then there's a few other movies that I'm attached to direct, and one movie that I'm just acting in that I start in June. So sometimes, it all depends on the movie or the show, like if it, sometimes I'll just act, and sometimes I'll find a, a, a piece of material, like The Unbreakable Boy was a book that I found, and it was a very moving piece about a father who had an autistic son. And, uh, and so I, I brought that, I was able to shepherd that into the studio and we made it into a, a, a movie and I, and I took a back seat there, I played a smaller role, Zach Levi actually stars in it because he was more right for that role. Uh, so I'm not like, what's best for me? I'm always like, what's best for the material? Uh, and, and so uh, I was really excited that that, and that comes out in February uh, worldwide. It's uh, gonna be in Lionsgate is releasing that movie wide in theaters and so yeah sometimes it all depends on the story if, if, if there's a story that I feel like oh I should write this and star in it then I'll do that if it feels like I should write it but I'm not right for the role and someone else you know 
I, I, I wrote a movie called The Vanished, and uh, Thomas Jane starred in that, and, and Jason Patrick, and uh, Anne Heche. Uh, and so I was just, I was excited to, to, I love actors, so I love working with them, so if they're, if they feel more right, then I'll put them in it, you know. And do you Whatever feel, serves the story. Do you feel you have an advantage as an actor to, to be a director because you can kind of push more from an actor because they you know what they're capable of or maybe what kind of tips yeah. exactly to give them because you were in a similar situation? I mean, I, I think so. I, I like to think so because I know how vulnerable it is to be an actor. So it's fun for me to be able to have uh, an actor know what it's like because I've been in their shoes, or, or uh, I understand what they're going through, and then being able to uh, take their performance and, and push them even further, because when I'm watching a monitor, because I'm an actor, I see everything. So I can say, I can see when it's, you know, it's, it's not working, and I can see when they're pushing, and I can see when it, they can go more in, in a certain direction. Um, so uh, it feels like a natural thing for me, and, uh, and I'd love to do more of it. And you know where to the kind of push them. To yeah, the, you know where, and you know how to talk to them yeah. to get them there. Because sometimes we'll go over to them and I'll be like, this moment here, and I'll say something. And they're like, oh, I understand. You know, and so it's it's a language that you kind of speak that they get that some directors that have never acted before don't under, don't get. You know. But I would think, like, yeah. just do it differently. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Sometimes it's frustrating because the director will say they something and you're like you're not clear exactly what they're looking for but you they can't express it you know what i mean and then it becomes like well i i don't know how to service that note um so it becomes harder as an actor so but so understanding the language helps you know? and the techniques and everything yeah. is sure well um Unfortunately, this is the whole time that we have for you on the stage, but I do have a one last question for you, or like a request. Yes. Do you think it would be possible to uh, get a selfie with you and all of our audience? Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, I guys, have... Do I have guys, your consent? Would you like that? All right. Yes. And I have our photographer, Jenna, to help us. All right, guys, you know the drill. Jenna, could you uh, direct us? We're gonna just uh, go on a walk. Me. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right. All right, guys. You know the drill. Three, two, one. Hands up. Three, two, one. Hands up. <laughs> 